So guys, all day we're going to have a great time. We're going to have a little bit of fun. We keep it pretty light. Um, uh, you can ask me anything. I don't have to answer. Again, please don't tell me the Miami Dolphins, I mean the, the Hurricanes score. But this next gentleman I would like to introduce. Honestly, if you really get to know him, he's a great guy. Like he's really cool. He's very innovative. And he's been in the National Football League for 21 seasons. Let's see, what was I doing 21 years ago? I think I was in college. <laughs> yeah, why didn't you get me? <laughs> so, um, this is his third season with the Miami Dolphins. He oversees and coordinates all the efforts for football operations and administration uh, here. And he's unbelievable. He worked very closely, obviously, with um, Coach Gase, uh, Chris Greer, and Tom Garfinkel. Um, he's known for his savvy decisions, like in, in, in uh, 2016, where he swapped picks, and we got three starters. We got three Miami Dolphins starters. I mean, just by swapping a pick, that's a brilliant move. Everybody, put your hands together for Mike Cannonball. Thanks, Bob. Very nice to you. Uh, if everybody can hear me, I, I'll just put this down. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yeah. I know if we can't, I always start off by saying, you know, I'm very privileged to have this job, and, you know, there's 53 kids of mine uh, in the office. I have two at home, but today I actually have, of the two, I have one all the way in the back, and he's also my harshest critic, so if he can't hear me, he'll be the first one to tell me, but uh, uh, I want to have, uh, w welcome everybody, appreciate your passion and uh, your support of the organization, and I uh, want to thank Tuan and Scott and Jason for doing this, and hopefully you guys uh, have fun, you guys can learn a little bit more about us, we can learn more about you guys, and uh, really kind of a unique time, what a weird period for our organization. Um, some of you may not even realize this, but tonight, the Florida Panthers are going to have their home opener. And tomorrow, we're going to have ours. So that's really remarkable that the Florida Panthers will have their home opener before us. And it's been 52 days since we played the Baltimore Ravens uh, in our stadium, and we're really excited to get there. Obviously, uh, our start has been perfect. Uh, we have a long way to go, but I know I'm very confident in the people that we have uh, in the key roles. You know, most notably, you know, Coach Gase, uh, his vision for the team, working closely with Chris Gray and I every day. And uh, Jay Cutler, a quarterback, obviously things haven't been perfect yet, but everyone's working hard and really excited about tomorrow and feel like we're going the right direction. And just the energy in the building, candidly, all week from having a home game, getting back into that routine. Because um, obviously we had you know such a unusual month going from here to Oxnard, California for a week. And uh, the Dallas Cowboys and the Rams were incredible to us. We literally like stepped into their shoes and we basically had like another week of training camp and used all their equipment and infrastructure. They were tremendous. You know, we started off obviously uh, well being the Chargers out there, came back here, went up to New York, didn't play well, lost to the Jets. We were here for four days and then we left for London a week ago Thursday and then got back late Sunday night. So uh, all that's behind us. You know, the whole focus right now is on Tennessee tomorrow and we're really excited to have a home game. And like I said, just being around the building all week, you could really feel the energy of being back at home, getting back in a routine. And what's really remarkable is uh, if we're sitting here, you know, this time tomorrow, we'll be able to say that our season's 25% in the books. We've only played three games. Like, we, we have a million miles to go. And uh, that's kind of been, you know, what Coach Case has told the players all week is we haven't even played four games yet. So uh, we have a long way to go. We're, we're trying to learn from, you know, things we could have done better. And uh, – just excited about what's in front of us and what we can still accomplish this year. So uh, I know this group has uh, a lot of thoughts, ideas, questions. So uh, why don't we start with those? Uh, what was the decision to go to Oxnard when you were you could have stayed with the Rams? I think they offered as well. Yeah, yeah, great question. So uh, Scott Bullis is our operations guy. He, he definitely does not get enough credit or notoriety. We look at a number of different uh, logistics, but we figured if we were in Oxnard then we could be kind of based in one spot uh, at the Residence Inn, and then it was just one bus ride after the walkthrough on Saturday to the ho team hotel, and then there were some other complicating things. Texas was in town to play USC, so hotel space in L.A. was limited because, again, we originally thought we'd just be in town for a night. So, and again, uh, the city of Oxnard, the Cowboys, the Rams, they, they were phenomenal. They put, you know, their IT staff uh, – on availability, their video people, and it just made our life incredibly easier to get out there, and, and we got rolling, and it almost felt like we were back in training camp, and 
everything was about, you know, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay, Tampa Bay. All of a sudden, you, you know, you hit pause on that, and now you got to get up to speed quickly on the Chargers. So, you know, we had to switch gears really quickly. The decision to go to London on Thursday versus earlier in the week. Right. Uh, who makes that call, and, and how do you feel it went? Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously Coach Case, at the end of the day, that, that would fall under, you know, him in terms of, Travel, but we have a gentleman, Wayne Diesel, our sports science director, and we looked at a lot of different things. You know, New Orleans played. Uh, New Orleans was, uh, obviously, they, they were in New Orleans. They flew to Carolina, played Carolina for the week, and then they flew from Carolina and just kept on going out uh, to England. And we looked at that, but we felt like, uh, as an organization, we've played there the last couple of years, and we've done the, where we've practiced Thursday, and then get the, a type of play where there's a lot of sleeper beds, and that's where we put the players where they slept. And then they were, you know, we got there, we did an activation, we did a, a quick practice, and then went to bed somewhat early Friday night. Saturday, we, we, you know, you're really right back on schedule. And then, I, I don't, look, we didn't play well, um, but the, um, why we went when we did was really well thought out. <laughs> the decision, how close were you? Make, to making a decision on actually playing against Tampa at a different location? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be around the league for a while. Uh, that was pretty unusual, you know, what we dealt with. So ultimately it was the league's call. They were great. We had a lot of conversations as they did with, you know, Tampa. And obviously if our bye weeks did not align, we would have, and we were looking at alternative sites. And the league was very good. You know, we were three or four days out. But, you know, as a lot of you know in this room, like, our games are really hard to forecast, and they can wobble just a little bit, and that changes everything. So, uh, but at the end of the day, it was about safety and the welfare of, of, of South Florida. So, uh, all options were on the table. Um, and again, I think for like the organization from a football standpoint, you know, for weeks you're, you're just thinking about you know Jameis Winston and Tampa Bay, and you know you're ready to go, you're geared up, and you're about to play a game. You know, it was obviously it was disappointing, but you know it was in the context of a much bigger you know situation with the hurricane. Hey guys, I'm gonna I'm gonna walk around with the mic so if you can let me kind of spread around the room. Can you talk a little bit about whoa? Can you talk a little bit about uh, the difference between a West Coast game versus an East Coast game versus you know displaced by a hurricane?